All right, we're going to just dive in here. Um, I'm just going to record this presentation, and uh, uh, if you just joined, that's fine. Uh, we're uh, taping this for some folks who I know couldn't be at either one of these events, and uh, we wanted to record it for them. Uh, we do weekly presentations. My name is Mark Shep. My wife is Becky. We work with Cindy uh, Jamada. She's here in Chicagoland with us. And we have uh, my brother Dave up in, in uh, actually Calgary, Alberta, Canada. And then uh, Katie Gross in uh, Minneapolis and some others that are uh, considering joining us as well, the Neolife team. And lots of customers uh, kind of all over the place. So Neolife. Uh, these weekly presentations are going to be uh, a variety of things. Last week we did one. We were talking about um, an introduction to Neolife, kind of a half hour look at that. Tonight's on digestion. We have uh, the next week will be on blood sugar regulation. And Becky and I just yesterday saw a really good presentation uh, around kind of the blue zone concept. But the, the topic was the uh, Mediterranean diet, which uh, from all that we're seeing is the healthiest one. I know there's a lot of voices saying all kinds of things, but uh, we want to make a presentation about that. And that'll be one of our uh, Thursday presentations as well. So uh, we're excited to share with you. Uh, digestion is critical. What I'm going to do is start sharing my screen and get this up. And I'll make it go to uh, the big screen. And um, that way uh, you can uh, take a look and see what's going on. All right, digestive health. Um, we at Neolife really talk about core nutrition. Uh, there's a certain nutrients that most of us are shy on. And so we talk about getting those foundational products. That's what we talk about in the in last week's sort of introduction to Neolife. Um, there's a short video you can go to to that at shareneolife.com that gives that introduction. And then we talk about targeted solutions. You can see around the circle there, lots of uh, additional things that people need to think about depending on their needs and widely varied depending on what's going on in your life. Tonight, we're targeting digestion and it's just hugely important. You could put putting great things in your, in your mouth and if your body isn't digesting well for a whole bunch of reasons, your cells aren't getting the nutrition they need. So it's a bunch of steps along that system, mouth, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, all the way down, of course, to the anus. And it's a, basically a hollow tube from start to finish. Uh, there are ways for the nutrients to get out of that way at the bottom end there with the, large, uh, the small and the large intestine. But uh, yeah, pretty interesting uh, process. Six stages of nutrition, what you put in your mouth, you have to get that digested. That happens, major uh, a portion of that is happening in the stomach, but it continues to happen in the small or large intestine. Then absorption is mostly out of the uh, small or large intestine. Circulation is from when it, when it leaves the, the, uh, the small intestine, large intestine, and gets picked up at the bloodstream, goes to the cells, and the cells have to have a, some level of circulation uh, from the blood close to them, otherwise it can't get uh, uh, nutrition or oxygen for that matter, and then elimination. And elimination starts at the cellular level. Cells are like, for lack of a better word, pooping out waste. That's toxic stuff that's gotta get out of there, and that uh, goes, you know, this next slide will say some more about that. So we have diet, what we eat, digestion, stomach mostly, absorption, large and small intestine, circulation from there to the cells, assimilation goes into the cells, and that's a critical step by itself, which also last week's talk says oh, some very important things about. And then elimination. We don't want you to forget about the lymph system. Now, the lymph system is not a part of the digestive system, but when we eliminate out of the cells, its cells are pooping out waste, toxic waste. It's the lymph system that picks that up. And we learned this when my wife had uh, cancer the first round, <clears throat> Hodgkin's, lymph cancer. There's two circulation systems in our body, the blood circulation system, which we all know about, that's with the vessels, veins and arteries, and a pump, the heart. There's actually more, flu <clears throat> more fluid, excuse me. There's actually more fluid in the lymph system than in the blood system, but no pump. The pump is the movement that we do. And so that's the challenge. We have to, we have to move. Uh, think about a, a, your sewer system in your house. That's what it is for the body. And if you have a, a drain, the last drain in the house down in the basement, if that gets plugged 
course, backing up from the outside system, then you got, you know, crap in your basement. And, and that's kind of what goes on. You can actually die more, uh, quicker from constipation than from starvation. So we have to get the stuff out of the system. So here it is again. All those pieces and digestive secretions are part of that. So we got salivary glands in the mouth. Stomach acid is what mostly is going on in the stomach, although there's a couple other things. Gallbladder is bile, liver, and then pancreas is for the, di the, the uh, diabetes issues and uh, insulin, critical. And there's mechanical breakdown, it's the chewing and the churning that happens, and then physical and chemical breakdown of the food, mouth, chewing, etc., with the salivary juices, stomach, the gastric juices, intestine, the enzymes, the bile salts, the beneficial microorganisms, which by the way, aren't even us, they're different than us. There's more cells that are microorganisms than, that are bacteria in our body than we have cells of our own. They're just learning about all that. I mean, they've been a number of years into it, but it's just fascinating stuff that as we learn about that, the, the microbiome as it's often called. So optimal health depends on good food choices. And this is where most folks are, are getting themselves in trouble. A lot of stuff can be avoided by better food choices. And then you gotta break, the, nutrients down and absorb it, balance of gut flora, all of those things, healthy elimination. Uh, the beginning is the most. And of course, because of that, factors that impact or impair healthy digestion starts with poor eating. For most folks, that's the problem. And then it just cascades from there because we never fix that. We don't, we don't know how drastically that impacts us. Aging makes a difference. At 40, I had gas because of my stomach wasn't producing as much uh, acid. Uh, fix that problem, gas goes away. Stress makes a huge difference. Alcohol, excess alcohol consumption and smoking, huge factor in uh, health, in uh, messing up healthy digestion. Illness and disease, and then uh, drugs and antibiotics. But uh, this is, we'll talk about this a little later, way more than we think it does. We just take painkillers and antibiotics and we don't think about what impact that has, and it has huge impact on on our health, and uh, we got to think about that. And of course, genetic plays a part. Uh, type one diabetics, for example, that's a, in many cases a genetic issue, and you just don't make insulin. Well, you got to have insulin, so now you have to uh, uh, artificially get that. But for many folks, the big issue is the first one listed: poor eating habits, and that just cascades because we never know how to fix it. Here's what it looks like and feels like: heartburn, flatulence, gas, bloating, diarrhea, constipation and upset stomach, and of course, much worse. We know a couple gals, one gal has what's called a J pouch. That's when she had from years of colitis that was never fixed, long, I mean, they're treating symptoms but never treating the problem, and uh, she lost her colon, the large intestine, and the very tail end of the small intestine now becomes, in, in the form of a J, attached to her, her anus, the way she can poop. And, uh, you know, tough way to go through life for the rest of her life. She's not, not that old. Uh, and then another gal, uh, people who, who have, uh, you know, uh, in, in the interest of losing weight, again, uh, that's an eating issue. Uh, it's more complicated than that, but uh, that's the main part of it. Uh, and people have said uh, we have to staple our stomach up and uh, additional things from that. One gal we know is worried about her esophagus. She has Barrett's esophagus. And that is... Uh, in danger of becoming precancerous and esophagus cancer is nothing to fool around with. That's a pretty serious cancer. So again, uh, things can go wrong in the esophagus already. If you have uh, reflux that takes acid back up, it's not designed for acid, that, that's a problem. The stomach can be an issue in terms of uh, ulcers, et cetera, too much acid. Stress uh, makes that, that difference there. And then of course, lots of stuff in the colon because of, um, we'll talk about leaky gut later. And, um, probiotics that uh, the bacteria, the uh, uh, antibiotics that we take to get rid of a flu or whatever, uh, wreak havoc in our, in our intestines. So lots of important things. Here's common reasons for digestive problems. And this is, the first one is what most folks are surprised at. Too little HCL hydrochloric acid, stomach acid. The majority of folks, 60% or more, actually have not enough acid in their stomach. And most of the treatments that we're gonna talk about in, this, in a few minutes here, are trying to tamp down acid because they think we have too much. And that's generally not the problem. And, and so you're fixing the solution in the wrong way, and uh, it's just a, a, a problem. Enzymes in the, in the uh, intestines, overburdened enzymes, not enough. 
too little lactase to deal with uh, the milk products, unbalanced intestinal flora, the bacteria, unbalanced meaning too many of the, of the unhealthy bacteria, uh, that gets us in trouble. And, and uh, the bacteria, whichever one they are, good or bad, are sending messages to the brain. The bad ones are sending messages that we, we don't want them to be sending. And then, of course, not enough fiber. We, we have dramatically increased our sugar, like uh, unbelievably so, and also, also dramatically reduced our fiber, and that combination is proving to be deadly to us. And then stress-induced imbalance. Stress is just a huge factor for health. So here's the common approach to address symptoms only, and we'll talk about some very specific ones here. And, it, and it's not dealing with the underlying problem. In fact, it's often making the underlying problem worse because you're not getting at why this problem is happening. So antacids, acid blockers, and laxatives. So here's a, you, you can guess from the color, there's a, 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 lots of commercials, I'm sure we've all seen commercials for the purple pill. And uh, so here's the stomach. We, we have food in our stomach, and the stomach is supposed to produce uh, acid. There's the esophagus, the stomach itself, the stomach acid. That's the main factor. And these are the proton pumps. When you hear about the PPI, the proton pump inhibitor, what it's doing is camp, tamping down the proton pump's ability to make acid. And there's a, you can see there's a bunch of those proton pumps around the stomach because the, the stomach needs acid. That's what, it's, that's what it's, it's designed to do. Use acid to break down the, the food. When you have reflux, the common, the common uh, in, in, um, assumption is there's, there's too much acid. It's bubbling up. And so if it bubbles up enough and stays there, it's certainly going to damage the esophagus. That's the problem you have to deal with. Uh, we call it heartburn. Okay? And uh, there are three main over-the-counter treatments, all of which assume too much acid. So here's the first one, antacids. They neutralize stomach acid, but they last only one to three hours and they need to be taken often. I know a guy who lives off of antacids. 20 years plus, I've known the guy, more than that, 30. And all, all 30 of those years, he's taken antacids to deal with stomach reflux, stomach uh, with reflux and heartburn. And I mean, just think about what's happening in the stomach. The stomach needs acid to do what? To digest food. If there's already not enough acid and we neutralize that, it's, the, 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 the food is leaving the stomach partially digested. That's not good for nutrition. Uh, second type, type of uh, inhibitor for acid is the, they call them H2 antagonists. They block one of the three signals for acid production. That lasts eight to 12 hours, but if you take it often, the effectiveness of that wears off pretty quickly, and so you've got to end up taking more, and that's not a good, that's not a good solution. And by the way, all of these produce bad, bad uh, um, outcomes down later on in the intestines, the small and large intestine. Well, the purple pill would like you to know, that the, uh, it's, uh, here's a quote from them. It's designed for frequent heartburn, two or more days per week. What that does is it stops heartburn by turning off many of the pumps that produce acid. And here's what another quote, taken each morning as directed, it gives 24 hour relief. So they assume this is a long-term fix. Last time I looked at those, those, uh, those uh, products, they say, do not take this for a long time. The products themselves will say that. However, the industry seems to be saying, ignore what the product says, what the, what the science says, keep taking it long-term. And again, all it does is fix symptoms, not the problem. If there's actually, now some people do have too much acid and they got to deal with that. And the best place to deal with that is at the mouth, what you put in. If, in fact, you have too little acid, then why, is the, why do you have reflux? You have reflux because instead of digestion, what's happening is, in fact, uh, fermentation, okay? And fermentation produces gas and bubbling. And so all that fermentation is whatever gas there is, is causing it to bubble up that's what happens with air bubbles, with, with the fermented, fermentation bubbles, they bubble up. So they're going to take acid with them. And uh, we think it's too much acid. In fact, it's too little acid. And the fix is add acid of all things. And we've been, for years, trying to reduce the acid. It's just a, a, a problem that people don't even know they have. So approaches to healthy digestion. Well, absolutely start with the best in diet. High fruit and vegetable high legumes, high whole grains, very low in high fat foods, that's where you get the acid problem, uh, preserved 
anything that's processed is is uh, is reduced value for us, cured and salted. Uh, red meat is an issue, and additional other problem foods. And uh, you can see at the bottom of that triangle, physical activity and weight management. Physical activity is critical to, like we mentioned before about the lymph system, but also for the overall health of the digestive system. It just makes everything work better when there's good motion. So promoting healthy digestive process, you got to start in those three places, stomach, intestine, and colon. And we're going to, we talked about the stomach a little bit already in terms of the acid issue. I want to talk about the absorption in the, in the intestines, small and large intestines. And here's a thing that many of us don't know about. It's, it's a fairly new concept, uh, you know, 10, 10 years or so. Uh, leaky gut, it's called. And what you're looking at is a cross-section of, of a gut. So the, the bubbly part, the, the, the rough parts are the inside of the intestine. Smooth parts are the outside of the intestine or inside of the body. And these are the things that can cause problems with the intestines. Stress toxins, food particles, uh, drugs, lots of different drugs make a difference, uh, uh, pathogens, uh, toxins like you know, uh, 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 biological toxins, and then organ malfunction. Sometimes the, organ, the, the body just doesn't function like it's supposed to function. So here it is again, you got arrow in both directions. One goes uh, to the mouth, one goes to the anus, that's inside the gut, that's inside the body. And here you have what are called tight junctions. Now, again, remember I said back in the beginning, the food has to get out of this hollow tube. If we poop out the food that we brought in and never gets out of the, that tube, we're going to starve, even though we've eaten lots of food. These tight junctions are designed to let out only the right sized food particles and nothing else, no toxins. What happens when we have stress, toxins, drugs, etc., is those uh, tight junctions become loose junctions and they when we, the term leaky gets almost a little misleading because the gut is in fact leaky but it shouldn't be this leaky okay you can see those holes have dramatically increased so bigger food particles go out and toxins go out that wouldn't normally be allowed to go out so we end up with food intolerance because if a food particle comes out too big that the body's not expecting in size the body thinks it's a, it's it's a it's foreign body so it in fact starts producing antibodies to the food and nutrition that we actually want. And so you end up with food allergies. 100 years ago, there were no food allergies. Basically, this is a, co a, a recent uh, uh, development because of this leaky gut syndrome that we have and, and all the bad things we're putting into our body. So that's an issue. Autoimmune uh, problems become part of the, uh, the life. Uh, and we'll see what, in fact, let's take a look now. Leaky gut affects the whole body. Here's a circle of issues that all are related to leaky gut. And you think, well, how can they all be related? Well, there, there's different things happening, but it's the, the, the root cause is the leaky gut. So the brain, depression, anxiety, ADHD, skin, acne, rosacea, eczema. You can see the words there yourself, thyroid, colon, adrenals, joints, sinus, and mouth. All those are common words that we've heard in terms of problems that we don't want. If we get them, sometimes the doctors aren't quite sure how to treat them because it's uh, it's not a straight line necessarily back to a leaky gut. In fact, some, some places don't even believe there's a thing called leaky gut, even though it's well established. So uh, it's, a, it's a challenge at times, and you have to deal with that. So uh, another part of the healthy gut, a small and large intestine, is the probiotics, the, uh, uh, those, those bacteria that are, that, are, that are supposed to be there. You have to reg they, they regulate intestinal function. They, they aid in digestion, improve lactose intolerance. They inhibit growth of pathogenic bacteria, the bad bacteria, and they aid in the absorption of minerals and they prevent diarrhea. Lots of good things are going on. Uh, benefits of probiotics, they promote colon health. They detoxify, they support healthy colon cells. Immunity is a huge thing centered uh, by and large in the gut of all things. We wouldn't have thought that. And then uh, healthy response to food in infants. A huge gut-brain connection, mental health and depression are affected dramatically by the kind of bacteria we have in our gut. And there's a direct link, a direct nerve, the vega nerve, I think it's called, between the gut and the, and the brain. And uh, the bad bacteria are sending messages, not the kind that we want. Uh, we want the good, good bacteria to be sending the messages instead. So we wanna, good, the benefits of probiotics, when, when you have good probiotics, you have 
better nutrition, physiological functions improved, immune response is stronger, and you have less issues with indigestion, infection, diarrhea, irritable bowel, etc. So elimination, get, gotta deal with elimination. Again, top of the list, poor food choices, low in fiber, constipation, irregularity, and discomfort. Those are all signs uh, of bad elimination. And uh, the, the trouble with over-the-counter stuff, again, you can buy all kinds. I mean, the shelves are full of lax laxative brands. The trouble is many of them work unnaturally, and they uh, harm the body's ability to, to do its own thing properly, especially when you do that long time over time. My father-in-law was, was a case of that. Uh, and then add to leaky gut because, again, it's more chemicals coming in. And it's, again, a symptom rather than the problem. So stress-induced digestion, I mean, we, we feel stress in our gut, not surprising because there's, there's things going on there that are uh, not good uh, from, uh, from a health perspective. Um, they can be external factors, they can be internal factors, and they can all lead to digestive challenges. So elimination is the process of eliminating any waste from the body, that's detoxifying, uh, getting, because again, right from the cell itself, when the cell brings in food and poops out, essentially poops out waste, that waste is toxic to the body. It can't stay there. And it has to go through the lymph system out to the, to the uh, bladders and wherever else it goes. Uh, I, I don't know that system well enough to talk about it, but uh, uh, we know where it ends up. However, I said before, constipation worse than starvation. So where do these toxins come from? Well, from metabolism uh, uh, in our cells already. We, I mean, it, it, we're producing as we, as we produce energy, but also from what we bring in in our food, environment, lifestyle, et cetera. And they just, they got to get taken care of. So a, a healthy immune function, detoxification followed by probiotic supplementation improves the gut health, which is connected to function in the body like immune, nervous system, hormones, mood, weight, brain, energy, heart, all of those things are uh, either affected negatively or positively by the appropriate or inappropriate bio, uh, biology in our gut. Got to pay attention to it. So this is where to start. You have way less issues with any of these digestive issues when we eat better on the front end. That's come back in two weeks. We're going to talk about uh, what is, from our perspective, the best diet. Lots of people agree with that. So what does Neolife do? A 60-year history, this is uh, our, our uh, owner and CEO, Jerry Brassfield, uh, pioneers in cellular nutrition, whole food, uh, nutrition and health, and then the, the scientists that are active in that process. Arthur first came to us. He was uh, very active, well-known in the world, actually, in the toxicology area around cancer uh, treatment, uh, chemo therapy, and finally said, I, I, I want to work not on the treatment side, I want to work on the prevention side. So he looked around and found Neolife and said, this is the company I want to be with. They got the best product so far. And he came early in the, in the 60 years and said, we're going to put a group of scientists together who do the work, and science is going to drive what we do, not fads. There are no fad products at Neolife. They wait 10 years before everybody else, after everybody else has put out a product like CoQ10 that's subpar because it's not whole food. Finally, we have a product 10 years later that's, that's uh, uh, whole food based and sustainable and better than anything out there. And that's their approach. So based in nature, backed by science, uh, highly bioefficient, bioavailable. And uh, we've been using the product ourselves 27 years. We got into it because of my wife's cancer. And uh, uh, she has had three rounds of cancer, now chronic heart failure because of the cancer treatments. And we're convinced, we, we can't prove this scientifically, objectively, but we're convinced that she's still around uh, because she has been boosting that whole 27 years dramatically with uh, nutrition. Well, we think there's three things. One is lots of people praying for her. Secondly, she's changing her lifestyle. She's changed that number one thing, uh, what you put into your mouth along with the exercise. And then, of course, in her case, as anybody that has compromised health needs to do, you got to get more nutrition in your body than, than your regular diet's going to give you. Uh, we think everybody should, should, uh, should uh, um, supplement, but we'll talk about that at another point. So what does Neolife provide? Betagest. Uh, it's targeted for the stomach. And I said before, most folks don't have enough acid. This provides that. My gas went away, essentially. I don't have to use this all the time, but I, I take it when, when it becomes a problem. 
and then targeting with the intestines, that's targeted with the enzymes, all natural can again sourced, and uh, just really important to, to have the proper amount of that in your diet. And uh, then this is a combination pack, it makes it easier. There, there's a combo of in, in a wrapped plastic wrap package that you can take with you. Uh, during the course of the day. Sometimes people need it at each meal. Uh, it varies with from person to person, but critical to start with good digestion at the front. Then this is our probiotic, Acidophilus Plus, very well made, uh, lots of balance of the good bacteria while keeping the bad bacteria in check, guaranteed live active cultures, whole food derived, uh, the equivalent of 10 servings of yogurt or five servings of Acidophilus milk. The difference is those Yogurt and milk don't make it through the gut, the, 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 not the gut, the, uh, the stomach with the acid. The, uh, the acid plus is delivered right to the top of the uh, small intestine and away you, go, away you go. This is how they do that. We'll spend a lot of time on that. But uh, again, extremely well made and delivered right where it needs to be. And uh, we've noticed, I mean, kids take this and uh, there's lots of good things happening in terms of behavior. The body does amazing things when it gets the right product, the right nutrition that it needs to do its thing. And we just got to make sure it gets that. And uh, uh, that's, that's sometimes not easy to do given uh, the, uh, how our food supply is. So this is a drink that I used, aloe vera. This isn't necessarily nutrition, but uh, uh, Neil, I said, you know, this is, we got to deal with healing the gut as well. I was for a long time taking a baby aspirin every day, preventative. Doctor said, that's why a lot of people are on statins, preventative, and uh, that's a whole different story. But uh, my, my baby aspirin was chewing my gut up, literally. And I just, I can't, I can't do this anymore. And so I stopped and had to find something to help heal my gut. And this was what worked, the only thing that really worked. And I'm not taking it uh, full time. But again, when you have issues, both these gals, the one gal that has esophagus, bears esophagus, and the gal that has the J pouch, this stuff would make a huge difference. I talked to a guy. Uh, who talks about having flaming bowels? This kind of stuff would make a difference in that regard. It's it's uh, and and lots of good side effects. Actually, some people have had relief from from allergies. Again, the immune system. So there's good things to to do when you can heal. Allow the gut to heal. That does a good job. Then fiber. Uh, you really need that for for health. And uh, this uh, has uh, five forms of fiber. And uh, it's, it's uh, easy to use and uh, soluble and insoluble as well. So I don't say too much more about that. Neelax, um, helpful for occasional bouts of constipation. Uh, it turns out my wife uses this all the time because of the damage that's been happening, that has happened to her bowels through the chemo and radiation. And this provides a natural help that e e even uh, works when you have to take it all the time, unlike the others that would additionally mess up her system. And uh, you can see lots of good things that have been you know, tested over the years. We know this stuff works. We use it all the time as we need to. And uh, then this is the garlic. Uh, also about uh, gut health. Garlic is really hard on the, on the, the unhealthy bacteria. And uh, it also happens to be good for circulation and heart health. And uh, we guarantee potency, target delivery, et cetera. So really good product there. Then uh, questions, we're not going to give so much time for questions now. I'm going to keep going on the tape, but I uh, do want to say something quickly about a detox. Often we encourage people when, they, when they're just starting to kind of regain their digestive health to do a detox. I just finished one myself, three-day detox. I like to do it once a quarter, once every six months or so. Becky does the same thing. Uh, Neelife has a very excellent one, and uh, we uh, use it consistently. Um, it can, can also jumpstart a weight loss program. Uh, I lost on this, de it's a three-day detox. It's actually a fruit and vegetable fast, so you can eat whatever you want, but because you're eating fruits and vegetables, uh, there's a tendency to lose weight, and then you're flushing your system. I lost three to four pounds in the, in the last three days, um, so it's a nice thing to start with uh, in terms of weight loss. Uh, it also slows premature aging because you're, you're dumping the, the uh, free radicals, heavy metals. That's the detox part. I particularly like the gut reset part of this um, that uh, helps us and increased energy. Just again, the digestive system is so critical in the, the rest of the body getting nutrition. You can put good food in. If you're not digesting it well, it's not getting to the cells. So that's what it looks like. 
uh, three, two steps, three days, very effective. These products have been around for years. They just put them together in this form in the last uh, five years or so. Again, whole food based. So it starts with Neolax and then garlic and the beta guard. These three things are what you take for the first two days. And then Acid Office Plus, the end of the uh, three days, you're taking this plus an additional four days. So you really build back up the good bacteria. And uh, uh, again, it's targeted and gets to where it needs to go. We talked about that before. So here's a quick look at how that happens. Day one and day two, you take the two Neolax, one garlic, two Beta Guard. Morning, two Neolax, one garlic at night, two days in a row. What do you eat? Only fresh fruits and vegetables. Now you can raw, raw or lightly steam them. No bananas, it's just because of uh, their makeup. And then drink lots of liquids. Uh, tea is appropriate, coffee is appropriate, but only black. You can't add additional stuff to it. Then on the third day, you can take a Neolife shake in the morning, uh, three more beta guard to help just sort of last flush uh, of toxins. Start already on the third day with the uh, replenishment of the gut bacteria in the acidophilus again in the evening, and then additional four days, morning and evening of the acidophilus. And then after that uh, evening meal, you can go back to regular meal that evening on the third day. And just, we all got to get our, our, our balance better in terms of what we put in. That's for most folks where the issues come for a balance. So let me stop sharing my screen. Um, I'm, uh, my, my thing is giving me grief here because I'm not sure what's going on. There we go. Okay, stop sharing. All right. Uh, yeah, that's what we're going to say. I lost my camera. I'm not sure where that went. But uh, we'll close off the recording and uh, hope that this has been helpful.